Okay, because I'm not going to be here and because we're just about done with this chapter, we are going to start reviewing for the chapter test, which is either going to be at the end of this week or very beginning of next week. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, we're going to start reviewing today. So this packet that you picked up starts with just a little bit of flat out review. I just ask you to define what weathering is. You can define it with a one or two word answer if that's fine, if that's good enough for you. Tell me um, a difference between chemical and physical weathering. Define erosion. This part here, this is the one where I'm worried you're going to end up skipping a bunch of stuff for not knowing what it means. It says, name the five agents of erosion and list one landscape feature that is created by each. Do you know what I mean by landscape feature? Like mountain V or a U. Okay, so a V or a U-shaped valley would be a feature. Mountains would be a feature. So something that is on the land because of that agent of erosion. So you're going to not only list the five agents, but you're going to make this one thing created by that agent of erosion. Then finally, um, define dep deposition. After you have that review done, uh, we're going to go through, or you're going to go through these, um, there's only 15, I think. Okay, I lied. 18 review questions. Um, you could do these one of two ways. You well, Here's actually how I think you should do them. Treat them like a test question. See what you can do off the top of your head first. See which ones you're like, oh, I know this. Then the ones where you're not sure. So let's say you're reading this first one. Which event is the best example of erosion? If you can't figure it out, put a question mark next to it. Then go look it up in a, after you've done all 18 questions. Looking questions up in your notes, that's called reviewing. It's basically studying if you look for the answer. If you're reading through all of them and you're like, oh, crud, I can't do any of these, just go back to your notes and look them up. I do want you to treat this like it what is a graded assignment. Uh, so try your actual best on this. You do have the whole period to do all of this. One more thing that I want to just talk about before I let you go. I don't know if you see up there in the purple. I did say we're going to have an earth science benchmark. So a benchmark, I know you've done these in all your other classes. It's just a guide to see where you're at. Um, to see if, like I gave the final today, how would you do? Um, so this you is going, answers. what? <laughs> Actually, I, after looking through the questions, I really do think you guys will do pretty good. It is 35 questions. And as you can see in there, it's going to be given during your lab period. So whether you have me, Mr. Mego, or Mr. Winters for lab, um, I know I'm starting on Wednesday. I think Mr. Mega might not be starting till Thursday or Friday. Same with Mr. Um, Winters. We are going to just start at different times because I know my um, I know who takes longer and who takes not as much time. Um, I'm giving two periods for it. It is only 35 questions though. So it's not like it's a huge long test, but it does go back all the way to chapter one, which we started in September. So chapter one, if you are, if you remember back, that was when we did observation, inference, and prediction. We also did density in chapter one. Chapter two was all the math stuff. So latitudes, longitudes, plus the connect the dots for the slightly older kids, plus all the stuff that went with chapter, uh, with that map. So gradient, profiles, all that stuff. Chapter three is rocks and minerals. So mostly the reference tables on pages six, seven, and 16. Then chapter four is the one that we finished up not too long ago. That was with the earth's interior. So the different layers of the earth. Uh, what else is in chapter four? Earthquakes, all that good stuff. I do not believe there's any questions from chapter five. If they are, they're ones that are uh, that we've already covered so far. So that's the benchmark, again, to be given during your lab period starting Wednesday. Any questions on that? All right, so I want you to spend a few minutes going through this. Actually, do you want to do it, some of it together? No, go start it right now. Sorry. Start it right now. 
Yep. All right, let's go through this. What did you say weathering is? A br yep, breaking down of rocks. Obviously, you could have gone down, uh, into more details, but the key there is just the breaking. What's the biggest difference between chemical and physical weathering? You could have had a couple of differences. So weathering is actually the composition of the rock is called chemical weathering duct, and physical weathering also happens in cold moist environment, while chemical weathering. Okay, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just say climate? I do want you to include this one. This is the biggest uh, difference. Physical weathering does not change composition. Hang on, hang on. But chemical does. That is the absolute number one thing you need to know the difference between chemical and physical. But I do think the climate is a close second. So climate is also different. So for physical, what kind of climate is best? Well, uh, no, guys, what's the what's the best climate for physical weathering? Warm and moist. No. Oh. Cold and moist. Cold and, moist. Oh. and then chemical is warm and moist. What is erosion? Movement of sediment. All right, give me one agent of erosion and a landscape feature created. Glaciers. glaciers. What do glaciers create? Glaciers absolutely make U shaped valleys. Can you think of any other features created by glaciers? Kettle lakes. List these, add them to your list. Kettle lakes, what else? What are some other features that glaciers make? Uh, moraines. Moraines. Like, what is that? Moraine is a hill of unsorted sediment. That's another one. Dryation. Those are scratches. What are a couple other things? Outwash plains. Outwash plains. So let's get them down in our notes. Um, another one uh, would be the Great Lakes and the Finger Lakes. So Logan says, I'll remember one, maybe two of these. I do think that's good enough. But the other thing is, though, if they... Say something about a moraine, even if that's not one you have in your list in your head. You do need bells and whistles going off in your head. If you see any of these words, you need to say, okay, Finger Lakes glaciers made those. Moraines glaciers made them. Do you have to memorize them? No, but you do need to know what made each one of them. Uh, give me another agent of erosion. What? Running water. Running water. Okay, what are some features created by running water? Okay, so a river, I guess we can include it. It's not a feature usually. A V-shaped valley. No. Oh. There are a couple other things that we put in here. Right. No. Right. No, those are all types of running water. Same with river. River is a type of running water. What are some other features created by running water streams, great uh, streams, creeks, brooks? That's a V-shaped valley. They are sorted sediments. What's at the end of each river? A delta. And what are the curves in a stream called? Meander. Meander. Those are the vocab words that you need to, again, hear. If you hear those words, 
you need to think rivers or running water. What's another agent of erosion? Wind. Let's go with waves first. What are some features created by waves? Uh, beaches. Beaches. Uh, sorry, what? Sorry. <laughs> Those are going to be sorted again. What else? No, those aren't landscape features. I put here. Barrier islands, so sandbars and barrier islands. And then I know again, it's not quite a landscape feature, but you do need to know longshore drift. It is a huge thing they ask about for waves. I heard somebody when we said waves, you had said wind. What are some features created by wind? Sand dunes. What's the fifth and final agent of erosion we did not include? Do you want me to spell that right, guys? Dunes, not dues. Is that what you were? Okay. It's okay. Well, dunes and dunes are very different things. And uh, yes, you guys did say gravity. What are some things that gravity... So these examples would be avalanche, mudslide, rockfall. The guys, the key here is these are unsorted. And finally, what is deposition? Depositing. Okay. Are there two P's? Yeah. Two, two P's? Okay. That's the basic. Now use that information to get the following 18 questions correct. These will be checked tomorrow. Pretend this is the test, which is coming up. See how you would do.